evening and welcome everybody and welcome to uh, our January Learning Development Specialist Group event on best practices in recording continual professional development or planning and recording uh, continual professional development. Um, before we start, uh, I'll just do a brief introduction to the group. Um, so the PCS Learning Development Specialist Group, uh, for those of you that uh, are not aware, uh, is for those involved in the development, delivery or management of learning to IT and communication professionals and users. Um, hopefully you'll find yourself in there somewhere, but uh, tonight's session is uh, of more general interest, hopefully. So uh, it's not just for specialists in learning developments, for everybody. Uh, the group itself, if you'd like to join us, uh, we are comprised of a wide range of different members um, covering IT end user skills. So people that are training applications, uh, it's about 18% of the group. Uh, professional skills, so process, um, service management, project management type skills, again, about 18%. Uh, technical skills training, so very much product or vendor training, uh, is about 16%. 16% uh, again from university or education sector. And then about a third of our members are just generally interested in IT skills topics. We do have a learning development group, specialist group website. Uh, we have the page with all our details and uh, all our events posted there and our YouTube channel, which has our past events. And uh, you might want like to go there. And uh, uh, I did an event, uh, I think a year ago, exactly on uh, CPD that was much more around different styles of CPD that uh, you might like to take a look at. And I need to always put a, a quick plug in for the technical training management book. Um, if you've got an interest in training um, or just good learning and development, then this is the book for you. Um, it's got a lot of insight about training specifically around IT, um, IT applications, IT projects. So if you haven't had a look at this book yet, then please do. And just to talk about our, our planned future events for the group, um, BCS has got four priority areas for this year, uh, which are community, inspiration, progression, and influence. So we're going to be basing our events for the next uh, four or five months around those topics. And the first of those today is about progression, um, looking at learning development and how to bring out the best in people. If you have any ideas, then please send them to me. I'm always open, uh, looking forward to ideas for people. And I do get a number of people suggesting topics that uh, as a committee we have a look at. And we have our own presence on Twitter. Um, if you'd like to follow tonight's event or any of our events, then uh, it's BCS L and D S G. So tonight's session. Um, I want to talk a bit more about CPD and what's good practice in terms of how you put together development plans and how you record CPD. Um, I mentioned I did a talk about a year ago and one of the top questions was, what should I be recording? Um, how should I record it? And so I thought this year we'll come back to that topic and uh, take a closer look at it. And as we go through, I'll show you some of the things that you, you need to do and then go and look at some of the things that are really good practice uh, when it comes to recording uh, your development. So let's start with what, what is CPD all about? Um, at its core, it's about get, helping you to get to a level of competence to perform a role. And once you're at a level of competence, you need to be able to maintain your level of competence. We're in a very changing world. Technology is constantly changing. We can, we can lose our competence very quickly as IT professionals. So being able to stay on top of uh, the technology domain, 
um, and even being able to enhance your competence is really important to what we do as IT professionals. It also has a benefit for others because you can support others in improving their knowledge and skills. So you can either do that uh, through managing them or coaching, mentoring others, but it's all part of the continuous professional development uh, the ecosystem. Um, so something like CITP is a good example of something that you might want to start working towards. Um, you can achieve the knowledge elements through education, but you need to gain experience uh, through your working practice and then validate your experience. But once you've validated it, you need to maintain your competence. You need to maintain your certificate of current competence. And the way to do that is to demonstrate your CPD, that you've been continuously updating yourself and learning and moving forward your knowledge. So who needs CPD? Really anyone who is a member of a professional body, in any form of professional body institute, membership association, anyone that's in a regulated sector, uh, anyone who wants to maintain their current competence, anyone who wants to demonstrate their compliance with professional ethical standards. And the benefits, it keeps you up to date, keeps your knowledge and skills up to date. Um, it maintains your professional standards, helps you with your career development, helps, helps employers uh, to ensure that standards are consistent across their company, and that they're high standards, and it allows you to promote greater work engagement. And really, it's very useful in the, the work context because it allows you to engage people and help them uh, develop in their roles. So that's the definition that comes from the CPD standards office. There's a lot of need for CPD. Uh, within BCS, there are BCS CPD requirements. Uh, it's a really important element of professional registration. One of the things that you say you will do when you become a professional member, um, fellow, or any of the chartered uh, registrations is that you commit to maintaining your knowledge and your competence. And you might achieve a number of different registrations and each comes with its own CPD requirements. And there are some requirements that are very specific that you, you must follow. So why do you need to record CPD? Well, one of the main functions of a professional body is helping members uh, through promoting and supporting professional development. Uh, professional engineering institutions, the Engineering Council license, advise and support their members on CPD. They help organisations like BCS understand what is it that somebody needs to do in terms of good CPD practice. And then they undertake uh, random sampling. And that sampling is to check that the ind individual institutions are actually promoting and supporting good CPD practice. Uh, the Engineering Council itself has a registration uh, code of practice, and it's quite clear in there that there's uh, you have to do professional development and there's a CPD code for registrants that practicing engineering professionals have to follow to ensure that their CPD is up to date. So CPD sampling, um, as it says here, took this from the, the, the Engineering Council's CPD policy statement. Um, sampling is not about policing individuals, it's about supporting a culture of continual learning. Uh, they want you to be able to demonstrate that you are conducting continual professional development and that you're taking responsibility for your own learning and development. And actually part of that is the Engineering Council tries to help all of their institutions be able to take, undertake professional development because it's, it's a requirement of professional development. So to be a registered professional, you need to be learning. 
you need to be continually developing. Um, if you don't take a good record of your CPD and be able to supply it when they ask for it, then you can lose your professional registration. So it is important to record your CPD. Uh, they don't set requirements as to how you report it, um, what you report, but it is important that you, you take note of the learning that you've been doing. In terms of BCS, the CPD requirements for CITP, uh, Chartered IT Professional, um, when you become a CITP, you commit to developing your knowledge and skills in your specialist area. And you can demonstrate it by submitting evidence of your CPD activities. Um, RIT Tech, you need to be able to describe your CPD activities um, in your area of work or specialism. Uh, and every three years, you'll be asked to provide some evidence of that. And um, similar for the Fed IP uh, registrations, um, any of the, the four Fed IP levels, you need to be able to provide continued uh, evidence of continued professional development. When you come to the, the Engineering Council regulated ones, um, CNG and ING, um, when you join the register of uh, chartered engineers or incorporated engineers, you will have made a commitment to maintain and enhance your competence. And as an awarding board body, BCS is required to make sure that you have a CPD record and that it is verified. And then BCS is checked by the Engineering Council. Um, they have a specific tool, My Career Path, that they use for everyone that's a member of the all of the professional bodies that are part of the Engineering Council. And if they ask you for a sample of your CPD, then you have to be able to, to use uh, upload it using their My Career Path tool. Uh, I'll show you what that asks for uh, a little bit later. So we're, we're going to come to first of two um, Mentimeter polls that we're going to do. So the first one, um, why do you record your CPD? Uh, so if you'd like to go to menti.com and use this code, uh, and hopefully Michelle will put it into the chat as well so you can see the code, then uh, if you go to menti.com, just put in a, a statement about why do you record your CPD? What does, what does recording CPD mean for you? So just take a second and I will pause this and switch over and see what the word cloud looks like. Always that moment where I'm I'm hoping somebody's there typing something. So progression, yeah, evidence, wanting to develop, wanting to have a record of learning. Uh, yep, reflection, planning, validation. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Job applications. Oh, nice one there. Don't. You don't record your CPD. Okay. Part of my job. So, yeah, so a lot there about it's about self improvement, career progression, reflection, maintaining your knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We'll we'll keep that going through the evening, and I'll I'll come back to that one um, a bit later. So 
So next section, I'm just going to talk about CPD recording. So the last time I did a, a talk on CPD, I had a lot of questions about what what do I record? Uh, what almost like is there a standard template? One well, there isn't, but there's some principles. So the foundation of CPD recording is to identify when are you learning. Um, CPD can take many forms. A lot of CPD is informal. Um, it can be as simple as a chat with a colleague over something that was new to you. Um, a very short presentation that you go to that you think, actually, I've learned something completely new about that product or that area of technology. A lot of it comes from just people you interact with on a daily basis, colleagues, customers, suppliers, um, professionals from other disciplines. A lot of my CPD, I would say, comes from working with people outside my organisation. Um, uh, I'm a member of BCS Council. I get to work with people um, and go to events with people that are working in a whole range of different industries. Um, all IT professionals, but they've all got different contexts uh, and different learnings and learn a, a huge amount from them. It can be supplemented by structured activities. And I think a, a lot of people I talked to about CPD think CPD has to be very structured. It has to be, is it a training course or is it a structured learning program? Well, yes, it is, but that's not the essence of CPD. CPD is making sure that you are finding new knowledge, new getting new experience of things that are within your competence area. So in my case, it's learning development in IT. So I spend a lot of time looking at how do others do learning? What are some good practices in things like assessment or certification? Um, just general discussions around that. that applies to any industry. So lots of different activities, lots of different things, preparing papers, presentations. This can count as one of my CPD things for the year. Um, getting involved in professional body activities or voluntary work. But you can also think of all sorts of other activities. So um, it could be training. It could be aiming for something that was award bearing, like professional chartership. So like CITP. Uh, it could be uh, looking for a particular deficit. So you might feel like you've got a gap in competence around a particular area, like say project management, and you want to address that perceived performance gap. Um, you might want to try and achieve, uh, re get to a recognised standard. Um, so if you're working in an area like quality management, you might want to learn more about the ISO 9001 standards. Um, it could be coaching or mentoring. Um, it could be mutual sharing. So groups such as this, specialist groups for learning. It could be any, any form of mutual sharing group. Or you can move up to a, a higher level where you're actually doing very deliberately structured action research, which much more usually tied to a uh, high level university study, but it's a very active way of, of developing new capabilities. Um, or you could do all of the above. So there was a, a, a really good paper on this uh, about models of continuing professional development put the reference at the bottom of the slide, that just says all of these are good CPD. When you're thinking about your development cycle, think about all of these as contributors to what you're, you're learning. But in essence, this is the core of a CPD record. You need to have some form of log saying, what have you done? When did it start? When did it end? and how many CPD hours would you like to log against that? Very straightforward. Now, it could be conferences, it could be meetings, any of the things I've talked about, but you need to maintain some form of log, whatever you do, so that you know what have you done, when did you do it, and how much time did, were you spending on that particular development activity.
moving on from just the, the CPD log, you've really got to think about your development objectives. Before you undertake any CPD, you've got to think about what is it that you want to develop? Why do you want to develop? It could be very simple, like achieve CITP by the end of 2023, become a member of BCS by the end of 2022. Um, three to four development objectives are usually sufficient for a year, um, unless you're aiming for something very specific. So like a new role, um, you're applying for a job where you know it's it's slightly beyond your current competence set, but you may want to develop so that you can apply for different positions. Um, the smarter they are, the better. Um, so the other thing about specific, measurable, actionable, um, you've got the resources and it's time bound. The more you can apply that, the better. But three or four good development objectives. Quite often, uh, when I'm talking to people about CPD, they say, well, yeah, I'd like to come up with some objectives, but I don't know where to start. And a couple of places that, that I go, the one that I go to the most often, um, just because of the domain that, that we're in, is the Sophia A to Z skills list. And you can go to the public Sophia.org site um, and it gives you a list of all the skills that are in the Sophia framework. Uh, so Sophia framework pretty much covers the whole of the IT profession and all the related domains. So um, I've just taken a sample from the top, the start of the, the A to Z list, but it's a really good prompt to say, well, actually, do I, if I'm in um, testing role, development role, do I know enough about acceptance testing? Okay, does that trigger something? Um, do I need to know more about business intelligence? Uh, these are very simple, succinct statements that can really help you prompt, help prompt the development that you do. And if you like these as an approach, then you can drill down further into it with Sophia Plus and the work activities. You don't need to go down into the detail of, of individual work activities, but Anyone that's uh, a member of BCS has got access to the Sophia Plus framework. And you might take an area like threat intelligence as an area you want to develop. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, the work activity section in Sophia Plus breaks that down and says, well, it's actually about threat intelligence gathering, but there's also information review, um, reporting, um, giving advice. Those are all areas that you might go, well, actually, I've never had a role that's been about giving advice to people. Um, I might want to take that as a, a prompt for my CPD development. So you're looking for prompts for your development plan, things that you think will help your, your career develop, your competence develop and move you forward in your learning. And then you might come up with something like this. Um, you start planning out, your, you're building your development objectives. So um, this is one that I've, I've borrowed from one of my member of my team. And um, it's a really good example. What you're looking at is a list of development goals um, and how do you plan to achieve that? And when do I want to achieve it? By you can see here, there's a broad range of different development activities listed. Some of them are very specific and high level. So APM, PMQ, uh, BCS membership, uh, some very specific to the work environment. So um, right to version control plan for our team. Uh, so in here is a breadth of activity, breadth of development goals that will then lead to a range of different activities. So this, this is still the sort of essentials of what you need to do for, for good CPD recording. And then you include your reflection. Reflection on learning is the most important step of all. Um, it allows you to consider how the development activity has helped you 
move forward with the intended development goal. So you've got your activity, you've got your time stamps of sort of when you did it, how long you were taking, but what goal is it addressing and what's your reflective statement on that activity? As you do individual elements of CPD, capturing that reflective statement soon after the activity is something that's really important to do. So those are the, the must-dos, but actually you can extend this and take this a bit further. Uh, and extending the CPD model, CIPD, Chartered Institute for uh, Personal Development, is uh, they have some really good advice on how you can really capture good CPD records. And you can move beyond just doing reflective statements. So for each development goal, they suggest that you think about how are you going to achieve the development goal? Uh, and what is the success criteria? How do you know if you've successfully achieved that goal? Now, it may be as simple as if the goal is achieving MBCS, then achieving that, the success criteria is very simple. You've got the certificate. But a lot of CPD activity, you've got to really think about what, what does success mean? Um, and when do I, when am I going to be able to, to recognize that I've got to that success criteria point? When have, when have you reached it? So that might be quite time, uh, time bound. So you say, I need to achieve success. This is what it looks like, and I'm going to achieve it by this date. And then when you're recording CPD, um, it's about recording what actions have you taken? So what have you done? What have you learned from the actions, which is your reflection, but then going on to think about how have you actually used that learning? Um, learning something is great, but being able to apply it is even better. And that's something that you should record as part of your CPD uh, log is, what have you put the learning to? How have you been able to apply it? Because that then takes you to the next stage, which is what further development has it prompted? So you're looking for what have you learned and how is it going to help you identify further professional development? So uh, CIPD uh, have got a really nice model for development plan. Their standard structure is to say, well, list out your development goals. Uh, how are you going to achieve them? What's your success criteria? And when are you going to do them by? And then for reflection, what actions have you taken against your plan? Um, what did I learn? How have I used the learning and further goals? And this then ties in very nicely to uh, the Deming cycle, the plan, do, check, act, because you need to be very deliberate about your CPD. You need to work out exactly what is it that you're planning to achieve. It could be something that's taken, as I showed you, from uh, a skills framework like Sophia. You might want to use a work-based competence framework. Um, any Anything that might prompt a development plan. Then you determine your path to get there and undertake the activity. And then you do your check. Have you got to the, the place you're looking for? Um, have you reached your desired goal? And then you can move forward and act uh, and work out where do you go next? So it's a constant cycle. Another um, enhancement that is really helpful and a part of applying best practice to CPD is to do an annual reflection. So at, the, at some point in the year, you maybe at the end of the year, think about what were the three most important things you've learnt from your professional development activity in the last year? Um, and what did you learn from them? What value did you add to your organization, your clients, your colleagues through your professional development? Uh, 
what were the tangible outcomes of your professional development? And has anyone else gained from your professional development? So this takes it beyond just logging what activities did you do and what's your own reflection. It's really think about what's the impact of your CPD. And because that then helps you identify what you can do next in your professional development, what activities will be really helpful in supporting your next career step um, or enhancing a particular area of competence that you're looking to develop. Uh, and then you can move on to next year. So what do you want to do in the next year? How do you identify your learning development needs? So what prompts are you going to use? Are you going to use last year's record? Um, are you going to use some prompts like uh, Sophia framework, maybe the APM framework? Uh, and out of that, what are your three, three main development goals? Um, so what are your development objectives for the year? And having a smaller number of development objectives can be very helpful because it then allows you to focus on the things that you really need to develop. Uh, it's great having a, a big plan, but you also want to make sure that you can achieve your plan, the success criteria again. Um, so make sure that you've identified your, your three main development objectives. And then try and identify what difference uh, do you plan to make? How do you want that CPD that you've undertaken to help improve your, your role, um, your organization, your clients, your colleagues? How is that development going to help them? I think something that, that is very much missed in a lot of CPD development is, is that external sort of I'm developing, but how am I also helping you develop or the organization develop? What am I putting back through having developed my own skills? And then finally, what, what arrangements do you need to make, uh, will you make to review your professional needs? So start planning your professional development review. Um, again, I see a lot of cases of people doing a development plan carrying out some activity, but then not really thinking about how does this build into my follow on plans? How do I keep this progression going? Go back to that Deming cycle, you need to keep spinning around that cycle continuously. So, on to the, the next section. Where do you store your CPD records. Um, I'll give you a few minutes to fill this one in as well. And I will just flip over to Minty. And you should now have um, a new Mentimeter page come up. Uh, and hopefully you can enter something on this one. Email. Okay, Excel, Word, my BCS. SISEC sites, uh, company training website, yep. Ever now, it's expecting that to come up, yep. iCloud. Like that form in Teams, it's a nice one. Okay, a bit more variety than I was expecting. So I like that. Um, OneDrive. Great. 
Great. Okay. Thank you. So, let's switch back to this. So, quite often get asked about tools for recording CPD. Um, so, BCS provides two different tools. Uh, there's the BCS Personal Development Plan tool, which is very focused on just recording specific activities. Um, as I said, that's the essential element of CPD. It offers the option to connect the activities uh, to the development of severe competencies, but it's quite specific on sort of that. That's the only framework you can link it to. Uh, the Engineering Council provides a thing called My Career Path. Uh, slightly more flexible and um, you can create uh, your own development plan um, you can add evidence of lessons learned and benefits gained which ties back quite nicely to, to what I was saying about what what's the outcome what's the impact um, what are the benefits from your CPD and you can also share your development plan and the evidence with reviewers so um, key thing with the engineering council registrations is it's it's being able to to demonstrate to others that you are undertaking continual professional development uh, so the bcs tool if you haven't been into the bcs tool uh, it's very very straightforward uh, you can set your development goals and then sign up your put your activities against it and the activities fairly straightforward you've just got your your basic log um, the type of event desired outcome um, what your current status is and then maybe a mapping against uh, a specific severe skill my career path uh, so this is where uh, if you've been asked to submit your cpd record for a cn or an ing registration uh, this is where you need to supply it. Uh, my career path goes a bit further in that it can say, okay, what what category of learning have you undertaken? Uh, what were the lessons learnt? What were the benefits gained? Um, and any supporting documents or evidence that you want to supply uh, alongside that. But it's just about collecting evidence um, and just tracking, again, fairly basic information about the benefit, the lessons learned and the benefits. But what I like is, is this, you need to really think of a CPD recording system that works for you as a learner. Um, mine is on Word. Uh, for me, that's the best way of doing it. I like the CPD template from CIPD. Um, it's a very simple Word table and you can keep that log going very easily and it's got all your reflective accounts and your actions um, and all the impacts that you've provided to others from your continuous learning all documented and then the second stage is to really think about a tool that you will use um, there's no point using something like my bc the, the bcs cpd tool uh, if you're not actually going to enter anything in there regularly. It's much better to use something like Excel or OneNote or Evernote or all of those other ones that were just coming up on the list. Um, actually, when, when you look at the, the CIPD uh, references, they're quite keen on pen and paper. Just keep a paper record of what you've done and your reflections. Um, it needs to be something that you will use and you will use regularly. And then the most important thing is think about your checkpoints. You've got to think about your, your weekly notes. So as I said, a lot of learning is informal. It's conversations, it's short presentations, it's interactions with others that you've learned something from. You need to keep some form of weekly note so that 
you don't lose those those nuggets that you've picked up. Um, but you also need to have a, a reflection checkpoint. So a monthly reflect, reflection checkpoint is really useful because that allows you a chance to say, okay, over the last month, what activities have I done? What impact has it had? What are the benefits to me and for others? Um, so that you can record that in the benefit section and re reflect more deeply about the, the learning you've been undertaking. And then finish with the, the annual review. And I, I like that weekly, monthly, annual model because it's a really good way of saying, okay, monthly or annually, you can think about some of the bigger objectives you've been trying to achieve, but also by taking notes weekly, even if it's just a, a single line, it helps you think about, okay, I have done a couple of things this week that I'd say that that's helped me learn something a bit a bit further. Um, but until you put them together in a monthly collection reflection, it's very hard to actually see what what's the bigger picture of, of the, the things that you've learned. Um, and then the annual really lets you think about, okay, have I achieved some of the, the big development objectives that I had for the year? How am I going to take those forward into the next year? So that three-stage model, again, is a really helpful way of thinking about recording uh, your CPD. And if you'd like to go further into the subject, there is an absolutely excellent book on continuing professional development um, that CIPD published. Um, it's into its second edition. It's, it is probably the best book I've read on CPD. And it's very clear about, okay, how do you go about good planning? Good planning is essentially think about all the different areas that are high impact for you and how would you like to develop them? How do you want to make sure that you're learning from it? How do you do good reflection upon your learning? How do you make sure you carry that learning forward into improving your career, into improving your, your performance in your current role? into developing new skills uh, and then conducting the, the regular reviews. So if you're interested in this topic, then great resource to go and uh, take a look at. So with that, uh, we've reached questions. Um, we've got a bit of time for questions. So at that point, I'll say, um, Michelle, can you help Hello. Sort of facilitate yes. if people have questions for me? So we do have a, a few questions. Um, one of the questions uh, from Richard was, will the slide deck be available separately from recording? Um, we can certainly make it available. Um, yep, I've suggested that we could put it on our website. Um, so we, we can certainly do that, um, probably be tomorrow, uh, but we can get that added in. Um, Andrew has asked, is it recommended for the cycle uh, that the cycle is a year long? Much can change in a year. Can shorter cycles with fewer objectives work well? Uh, absolutely. I, I think one of the themes that I, I was really trying, trying to pick up on was you need to customise your CPD to what, what works for you, what works for your context. If you're in a, a very fast moving um, position or if you're looking for something very specific like you, changing career you, you might want to look at something that is much shorter term and having one development objective is fine um, you need to set your own time frame these are just some good practices that if you're in a steady role you need to be thinking at least an annual review um, that's your absolute minimum, but you should step it up from there. If you're in a if if you're in a situation where your learning is, is having a far faster, far more immediate impact, then yeah, use a shorter time frame, but don't let it run more year before you do your own uh, annual reflection. Thank you. Uh, Katie has given us a couple of questions. So our first one is. If you could improve one aspect of my BCS, what would it be? <laughs> um, 
I'm actually involved in some of these discussions within BCS. It's probably no surprise, but um, the the biggest one for me is what I was saying about the the extending the reflection. Um, if I go back to um, the the CIPD um, uh, reflection template, the thing that that always stands out for me is how have I used this learning? And how has this learning benefited my organization or others? Um, it's not it's not clear that this is one of the things that the BCS CP do tool. It doesn't encourage you to, to put those things in. Um, but the reflective accounts are very useful and the impact is very useful. Um, and the tool just really doesn't prompt it at the moment. So there, there is uh, some work underway to really rethink what is what is good CPD, um, how can the CPD recording tool be more flexible, um, accommodate far more, uh, be less framework based and more learning orientated, I think I would say, so that it doesn't matter if you're a specialist in um, security or project management, uh, if you've got a specialist framework that you're working towards, you should be able to use the CPD tool. Uh, as I said at the at the beginning, the whole point of CPD is to maintain, help your own development, help you develop and maintain your own skills. But if you've got a chartered status uh, you, or you've got any of the registration levels, you have to be able to show that you've got a record of CPD. But that's got to be a meaningful record that's helping you as well as just meeting clients. Uh, so, yeah, I think those are the areas that, um, that are quite weak on the BCS tool at the moment that uh, I know that they're, they're being looked at. But uh, and the fact that it's tied to just one one framework, it's helpful, but it's a prompt. Sophia is a great prompt, um, but it's not the only place to get ideas for development. So hopefully that gives you some ideas, but it's being worked on in there there will be enhancements to it fairly soon. Thank you. Uh, second question was, when in your career did you really get involved in CPD? <laughs> um, I could say when I joined BCS at uh, the age of, what was I, 18, 19. Um, uh, I actually did a degree that was had BCS accreditation. Um, I don't know why I'd set myself that objective, but I did. Uh, and I've been aware of and engaged with CPD since then. Um, and I've now worked my way through multiple organizations um, and I've just had a spell on BCS trustee board. And I, I'm just forever talking about learning um, and development and wanting to to find out more and just being curious so it's something that I've always done but formally um, good 25 plus years um, it was one of the first things that I got when I when I joined BCS as a student member was the single page I don't know if there's anyone on on call today that that's been in BCS long enough, but there used to be an annual cardboard sheet that was sent to you that was your CPD record for the year that you had to fill in. And it was pre-punched so that you could keep it in a ring binder and kept those going for a number of years. So uh, yeah, I've been doing it far too long, really. Um, but it's it's a fascinating area. And so, and any, anyone that really is interested Go take a look at that CIPD book because it's it is the best resource around on CPD. Uh, and Katie follows that up not with a question but with a, a very nice comment. You have a wealth of knowledge, Kevin, which has benefited many people. Thank you, thank you, Katie. Uh, new questions come in. Um, I'm apologies if I mispronounce your name, so uh, Guli Giuliana. Um, talking of learning mindset, which training do you see as the most valuable for professional progression at the moment? <laughs> um, 
everything. Um, it's all it, inclusive. It, <laughs> um, I could say the the most valuable at the moment. I find the the informal learning, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, it's the informal learning that can actually be very powerful because those are the things that you won't necessarily find in um, a training course or um, I I do a lot of continuous learning with um, the Open University. I, I spent a number of years working for the OU and one, once you go there, you can't escape it. Um, and it gets you into the habit of constantly thinking about learning. Um, but anything that is, um, I say reflective in its nature or helping you learn something new. So I try and look regularly at sort of technical sites that have some some usefulness, some validity, something back that that really backs them up. Um, but equally, train, training courses. Um, I like going to, to, to things like Future Learn. Uh, they're all valuable. They're all great learning. They're all contributing to CPD. And this is where I find this this slightly more open structure about saying, how does this support my my plan? What have I learned from it? Um, how have I how can I use what I've learned? It could be prompted by anything, but you need to look at uh, what is it that you want to achieve, and then any activity can be valuable learning. So, so it's not more specific, but it's actually um, part of what we need to do as a, a learning community is think about how powerful even things like small conversations can be. That can be a significant CPD point for somebody um, and it often gets overlooked. Another question has come in uh, again from Richard. Do you need current BCS membership to maintain access to the BCS um, PDP tool? Uh, you need to have some form of BCS membership. It can be a um, although the, the entry level is affiliate. Um, but yes, you need to be a member of BCS at some level. Um, so student affiliate. Uh, but yeah, the, the, to be able to access that specific tool. Uh, the same for the My Career Path, uh, that tool again, that you need to have registration with one of the professional bodies in the engineering council to have access to that tool. Um, as I pointed out, need, they're both good for supplying evidence to say that you've met the compliance requirements, uh, but actually the most powerful tool is Excel pen and paper, a word table. Um, they're all really, really useful. Uh, we have Eric agreeing with you about the Open University. He said, uh, you definitely can't escape learning and development at the Open Uni. I've been there for 11 years and you're right, it is a typical learning organisation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I could say, I, uh, I was at the OU for four years and I, I, I haven't really stopped talking about learning development and CPD ever since. Um, it, it's infectious, so yeah, completely agree. Kate is agreeing, aha, maybe that's the link. I did an OU degree starting with philosophy, then design and innovation, ending with web design. Wow, Katie. Yes, finding yeah. your interest can lead to lifelong learning. What is it about OU that keeps you interested? It, my, my reflection, that, so I did my MBA with the OU as well, and it, it's constantly thinking about how do you apply your learning to your work, and it just comes through, uh, not just to your work, to any situation that you're in, and it's that application to your current context, and then being able to reflect upon it that the OU is so good at teaching people. Um, doesn't matter what subject you're looking at. And I think that's that's where I like talking about CPD, is it can be seen as very regimented, Very, it's got to be very structured, um, it's got to be very deliberately planned, 
you've got to meet certain criteria or use certain tools. You, you don't. You just need to have a development plan with some objectives that you want to achieve. And you need to go and achieve those objectives by engaging with some form of learning or other people, um, just community of peers, anyone, and then being able to reflect on that. And the Open University is such a good example of teaching you how to do that. Um, that actually, if that was taken forward into the IT profession as a whole, I think we'd all be doing much better at recording our, our CPD um, and demonstrating that we are, we're all learning. So. Okay. That's all of um, the questions that we've received. I have one personally, which is if you're learning things in those off moments, those you know, quick chats with people, are you able to remember it or do you kind of need to have something that you can make a note so that you can then remember to record it properly afterwards? Um, you need to have something that, would, if we go back to, to what I was in, you need to have a tool that works for you. Um, uh, I'll go back to this. Uh, so mine, mine is um, uh, notes, Apple Notes. Um, I always have it open. I'm always recording just little snippets of things in there because I can then go back and find them um, and do the reflection at the end of the week, um, end of the month. But anything that you will use, and I think that's okay. the thing that that um, often gets overlooked. If you try and put it into a into a system or into a specific place, it's like email was one of the things that was mentioned on the Minty poll. That's a that's not actually a bad place because at least you can do a search and find it again. Um, but something you will use. Okay, um, Richard uh, has nipped in with possibly our last question. Uh, which is, oh, no, we've got one more. Um, would you expect uh, PDPs for leadership roles to be very different to individual contributor roles? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, the, it, it, it comes back to where I like, I like using frameworks like Sophia or um, the APM frameworks and to think about what's relevant at different levels. Uh, so when you're looking at somebody that's in a senior position, uh, you should be looking at things that are much more about um, outward uh, engagement with the industry, um, engaging with, with the peers, working with finance people in different industries. Um, you, you've got to be looking upwards and outwards for where your, your CPD and your development objectives should be coming from. Um, if you're at the, the sort of mid layer of an organization, you're going to be very focused on, okay, how do I help my team perform better? How do I help, how do I help the organization perform better? So you've got to find things at the right level, which is where going into the Sophia plus work activities is great because it says, right, if you're looking at a higher level role, then you might not want to think about reflection. Uh, in a, a, a different context to you would do in sort of a Sophia level three role. Um, so yes, you absolutely need to have different uh, different approaches for different levels. Um, if we can sneak one comment and one yeah. one uh, question in. So uh, Katie has suggested, which I thought was really good, reflecting on your calendar content. Yes. So a great way to one remember everything you did. One of the ones uh, that I use. Yeah. Ah, see, we're getting new bits out. So Eric's very last question, we're going to slightly yeah. overrun by hopefully just a minute or so, is what are your thoughts on audio and video recording of reflections? Are there applications that allow us to capture our learning and development this way? Um, yeah, things like the the audio notes on, on your phone. Uh, yes, the, anything that captures the reflection, just remember to say, do your weekly summary, do your monthly reflection. Um, 
you've got to turn it into to some form of reflection at the end of the month. You can store that as as an audio note. Um, you could store it as a video recording. They're all good. Just remember when you come to say the engineering council says, OK, we want to, to sample your CPD um, and your evidence. You can actually provide those as evidence uh, of as long as you've talked about what have you what have, activity have you done and what's your reflection upon it that's good evidence to supply as a cpd record um so absolutely and i think that's actually all of our questions and right. the end of our learning so maybe we just need to remind people to take some time to reflect on today's webinar and to remember to record it for their CPD. Great. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you, everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, really enjoyed talking to you all. And uh, hope that was a, a useful session. And as Michelle says, please reflect upon it. Please take your notes. And uh, we'll, we will be posting this recording uh, in the next few days. So. If you want to go back and have a, a look at it and watch any sections of it again, then uh, it will be available. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining and uh, hope to see you at one of our future events. Mm -hmm.